is called capturing opportunities. The word capture that I'm using comes from the word that Jesus used to his disciples when he crucified, resurrected, and before he ascended, where he seated at the right hand of God the Father, he said to his disciples, go into all the world, preach the gospel, etc. But then he said this. He told about going away. He said, occupy till I come. Say that with me. Occupy till I come. That's where the word capture comes from. It means to capture opportunities until I come again. And today is Mother's Day. And I would like to use today to inspire us to catch, capture some opportunities. All right? So let's go with the message, Rise. Let's, let's pick it up. If, if it's your first time, we'll use this big screen. You'll see scriptures. You'll see things up here. I'll ask you to say them with me sometimes. It just helps the message stick a little bit better. You're seeing it. You're saying it. And you might remember it. Amen? That's the plan. So say the title with me. Best Mama, Bless Mama. So we're going to talk about the best mama, which is my mama. And if you were preaching, you could talk about your mama. But since you ain't preaching, I'm going to talk about my mama. Amen? Summer, how you doing, girl? How's school going? You got that wrapped up behind you. You home for the summer? Good for you, because your name is Summer. There's this girl that works at McDonald's. Her name is Autumn. You ought to meet her. Summer Autumn. I'm just saying but sometimes the girl's grouchy. So I told her, your daddy meant to call you Winter. <laughs> That's what I told her. We're playing. We're just playing. We're playing. But anyway, let's go to the Word. Here we go. Bless Mama. Best Mama. Bless Mama. So Best Mama, let's just look at it. Let's just look at the Best Mama. Who's Mama? My Mama. It's Mother's Day. But I'd like to learn today from her. I think we all can learn from her today. Mama captured some opportunities. My mother was a drunk. My mother married my daddy when she was 16. He is 23. Weird. But that's the way things back in the day it happened more, didn't it, say? And uh, had a hard life, very hard life, very hard life. And uh, my mother had a great work ethic as a waitress, but she had a drinking problem. She'd come home after work, and she'd drink till bedtime. And she'd stumble her way to bed many times. That's what I saw growing up. Now, my brothers and sisters, I don't know if they saw that or not because they're older than I am. I'm seven years the younger. And uh, it happened, you know, but pretty much that was the story of my mother's life. My mother cheated on my daddy. And I'm going to tell you straight up right now. How can I say it? I can't stand men that cheat on their wives. Can I say it that way? How about that? Can I say it that way? Do y'all understand my English today or not? You understand my English? Can't stand that. Makes me sick. Okay, got it? Can't stand a woman that cheats on her. You hear me, yes or no? If you're married, stay married. Don't do that. It's horrible. The pain and the hurt. How many have suffered pain from that? You know what I'm talking about. Just go ahead. It's the truth. It is what it is. Well, that's what mama did. And that's who mama was. And so then she ended up shacking up with this guy, just me at the house. And so this man down the hall, you know, doing things with my mama. Just not the life you want to live. You understand? She marries this man after a few years. Now he's catting around on mama. She's depressed. She hears sitting there drunk one night, late November. And Billy Graham comes on TV. You've heard the story. Mitchell said he's heard it so many times. He's going to keep hearing it. The Bible says don't remove the ancient landmarks. Did you know that? The Bible says that. If you've got somebody in your life that impacted your life, don't ever forget them. Rehearse it. Remember where you came from. Did you hear me or not? So Mama was watching Billy Graham by accident. And the gospel broke through my mama's heart. Don't, don't shortchange what we do here at the Fellowship Church. You hear me? Preaching the word. Are you kidding me? Loving on people and sharing the gospel. People's lives are changed. This is beautiful, man. So my mama that night, I came home after party, and she said, we're going to church in the morning. And if, if it didn't happen, she got up. My mama. We went to church. I cussed her out on the way. Three weeks later, 
we were both saved. That's crazy. We both accepted Jesus as our Savior. Didn't he know what we're doing hardly? Other than the Bible says God loves you. If you'll put your faith in Jesus, not some church, not some man, but in Jesus, his shed blood on the cross. The pastor that even spoke, he had no training whatsoever. He was just a regular guy. He had been a hell raiser himself, and he got saved and started preaching, and he shared the gospel with us. Amen? So here's the point. Mama changed. Say that with me. Mama what? And she had to start capturing the opportunities that were hers. Do you hear me? This is not a message about excuse making or you're going to be really uncomfortable. Here we go. Come on. No excuses today. Here we go. I'd like to introduce you to my mother now. There she is. There's my mama, Ann Clark Riley. Her full name, Annie Locke Reynolds Clark Riley. That picture was taken about 26 years ago. Right here in Inglewood, at the church I was at for 17 years. It's hard to believe I, we started this about 17 years ago. Isn't that crazy how time flies? Amen. Wow. But that was mama. That's my mama. Did you hear me? I don't have a lot of pictures of mama. I had a little bit of hair on my head right there. You know, but Kim likes me. She says I look better now. She's just playing, isn't she? But go ahead, go ahead. Keep going, Rod. That's the last time I saw Mama alive, that picture right there. I use that. It's not the clearest picture, but I use that picture on things that we put out, whether it's messages about Mama or articles in the paper. We still do occasionally that people come see me, but that's the last time I saw Mama. 25 years, 26 years ago, July. 26 years ago, July. Mama made that dress herself for my brother's wedding. Are y'all with me so far? But the mama I grew up with and the mama after Jesus came into her life, different mama, she had to capture that opportunity. It wasn't like Jesus came in and everything got perfect. That is so much bull. You got to work at this. Say that with me. You got to what? You got to work at this. Kidding me? So I want to tell you about mama. I want to just spend a little time right now. I'm just show you what mama did. She was always smiling. There's no excuse for us not smiling. You don't understand. I didn't grow up smiling. Well, start doing it now. Say, I just don't like to smile. Well, now we found out why you don't smile. You got to capture the opportunity. Smile. People wonder why people aren't attracted to them. Why don't aren't people attracted to me? Maybe it's because you always look like a grouch. I mean, that's ugly to say, but so what? It is what it is. Smile. Yes or no? Smile. Yeah, but I don't have good teeth. Do this then. Whatever. Come on. She was always smiling. You ever been down and smile lifted you up? Say, you ever done something stupid and Instead of somebody really ridiculing, they're just over there with a gentle smile. And you felt like you could get up. Smile. This is just my mom. I'm introducing you to her. Mom always smiled. When I'd preach, it was a two, it was a two-seater kind of thing. One like this, some pews, and over here some pews. So I'd be right here. And mom would be right over here, right where y'all are. And mom would be smiling. Shoot, I could preach like crazy with mama smiling. Amen. So smile, guys. Next one. Say that with me. She was what? The word is care. Do you care for people? You just care for you. You've got to capture the opportunity if you want to be a caring person. I didn't grow up caring about people. Okay, we get it. You grew up selfish, okay? That is not God's plan for your life. God's plan for your life is for you to occupy, to start caring for people. Amen. What does that mean? It could mean a lot of things. We're going to talk about it. She's concerned about others. Help me, buddy. She was constantly what? Giving. That's how you can show you, you care. We're not talking about bringing all your money to the church. No, we're talking about caring for people, giving people things. Your neighbor. For example, I went to Chili's the other night. Man, I got the queso, me and little Danny. 
Kim had an event. She could take Abby, uh, you know, one of these uh, community events that Kim does. And, but, you know, she said, will you keep Danny? Sure. So we go out to eat. That's what I do when I get the children. <laughs> Tell you that right now. We're going to go eat. So I got the chips, and I got the queso like I like. Woo, get it piping hot. Mm -hmm. And I get a deal if I order something else. And so I knew Kim would want something. I ordered something she liked. And I didn't eat my queso, and I took that home to Kim. Now, that's just a simple thing, just showing a little bit of care. But here's what I want to say to you. A lot of times we go out to eat. We have a little extra something. We have a little extra something on the table. Why can't we share that with a neighbor? Yes or no? You hear me? Well, they won't like it. You, they find somebody that will. I grew up in the country. When you, when you make a pie, did you know you don't have to eat the whole pie? There could be somebody down the street that might like a piece of your pie. Say, well, I never thought of that. Well, that's what I'm talking about. Mama thought of others, yes or no? When you're cooking something, don't just cook for your family. Somebody, think of somebody else. If I throw a little extra in there, maybe the old man who's alone down there can get something to eat. Are you hearing the message or not? This was my mama. The lady at the fence, after my mother was murdered, she said, she came to the fence, and I saw her, Miss Lampley, and she said, your mama came every day to this fence, and every day she came with something in her hand to give me. Could be a little anything. Care for people, give to people. That's what mama's trying to tell us today. She worked with her what? So she can what? You might say, I don't have anything to give. Do you have two hands? You might take those two hands you got and do something with them, and you might have something to give. And, 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 and stop with the excuse of, if I had, I would give. That's just bull. You're just shooting bull. You got plenty you can do. We live in America. Did y'all hear me or not? You telling me, all you got to do is ride around on trash day. If you really wanted to be a giver and give to people, you could ride around and find stuff by the road that people are just throwing out. How many do that every once in a while? How many found something lately? Let me see your head. Yeah, look at us. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And if we don't need it, how about give it to somebody? Yes or no? Say. This isn't that hard, guys. Mama had nothing, a Social Security check had a man that beat her at the house. If she could smile, if she could give, if she could care, you and me, we ain't got jack squat excuses. Amen. Mama was an encourager. This is who mama was. That's why I had the best mama. She used her words to build up. Say build up. Do you use your words to build people up or tear them down? Say, when people see you coming, do they go, oh my gosh. People, when they see us, ought to be going, hey, hi, amen, come on. She never complained. You need to capture that. You and I need to capture that. Well, if she had my life, you want to trade lives with mama? Nobody would sign up for that today, would they say? being beaten and ultimately murdered? Here's the point. Mama has a message, and that is, listen, though you slay me, yet will I praise you. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Amen, say. If that's your focus, it changes your attitude. Amen, keep looking. She served. Say that with me. She what? She served. Mama loved serving. It sure beat that house she lived at. By the way, that house she was killed, and I talked to the veterans again this week, told them we would be sending a check for the purchase price of that land. We're not expecting anything in return. But uh, hey, Linda Bird's brother's here today. How you doing, buddy? Good to see you from Rockingham. We bought that piece of land. It's right across from the VFW. Do you still go back that way some? Maybe next time go up there. Where the Veterans Club is right there, right across is a, is a cemetery for the veteran. Well, Mama's house was two up on the hill. And we were going to buy that and turn it into a memorial for domestic violence, but the veterans wanted it. So we backed off and we're going to support them. 
Amen? So that's a good thing. I think that's what mama would like. Amen? So you're back. You can go back and check it out for us, okay? Praise the Lord. So that was mama. Mama prayed. Say that with me. Mama what? Mama prayed. You've got to capture this opportunity. You, you can pray. You have the chance to pray. Mama always got up early, and she never went to bed till late. And I never heard her complaining about her family of eight. There were times she should have been sleeping late in the midnight hour, but she'd get down on her knees, and you could hear her pray, Lord, fill them with your power. You can do that. Did you hear me? Mama did it. And look at me today. Look at me today. Mama's prayers. Amen? Don't shortchange prayer. You can be amazing. Mama says capture the opportunities. You hear me? She ain't bragging. She was humble. But her life speaks. It says, if I can do it, you can do it. Amen? Say, that's the message today, guys. Mama hummed a lot. Mm -hmm. She's cooking. Mm -hmm. She's working in the yard, sweating like a pig, working on the plants. Mm -hmm. Did you know if you put a song to your work, it makes work more enjoyable? Yes or no? Amen. Chris, you do that all day long. You working out there with that wiring, crawling in attics, hotter than a dog, and you singing all day long. Isn't that beautiful? How many else are like that? When you work, you sing, you hum, you do. Look at that. But you don't have to do it, do you? But some of you, you have to do it now, don't you? Because it's who you are, right? It's who you are. Amen. So that was mom. I'm just introducing you to her. She loved. Mama loved. Mama loved. Mama would not be the type of woman that you could get with and gossip about people. Mama would go, Mama would leave that. Mama would go work in the yard. Mama would probably say, why are you talking like that? Say. Well, we could do better by just saying that, couldn't we? Couldn't we? Can't we, can't we find something good to say about it? Amen or oh me, say. She loved. She loved us kids. She loved people. She would take a van at the church and go pick up older, elderly women that couldn't have gone to church unless she picked them up at, the church, at their house. And that was mama. That was just mama. Amen. Say, she's just preaching today. She praised. Mama praised. In the old country church, a lot of services, they'd have time where you could give a praise. Small little crowds many times. Anybody have a praise? Boy, mama would give a praise. Now, she wouldn't take the floor. She'd have a big mouth like I got. But she would give a praise. And she praised in her life. She praised the Lord. But you've got to capture that opportunity. You can complain. You can, you, can, you know, whatever. Or you can pray and you can praise. Amen. So, good stuff. Mama's still teaching me. In the fellowship hall named after her there in Rockingham, one of these things hangs there. This was a cross stitch that she did. But based on what I said, I want to read it to you and see the weight that it carries now. This is the beginning of a new day. God has given me this day to use it as I will. I can waste it or use it for good. What I do today is important because I'm exchanging a day of my life for it. When tomorrow comes, this day will be gone forever, leaving in its place something that I've traded for it. I want it to be gain, not loss. Good, not evil. Success, not failure. An order that I shall not regret the price that I paid for it. Amen? So the best, Mama. Amen? Now here's the lesson for us. Pop it up, Rod. Here we go. Mama captured the opportunity and lived every day as if it would be her what? My stepdad, I didn't know this till after things happened, but he would tell my mama, because she had a confidant or two, but he would tell her, I'm going to kill you while you sleep. 
Can you imagine such a thing? Mama slept when we found her that day. I hurt the, the house. I didn't. The authorities. There was a hatchet under my mother's pillow. You ever thank the Lord for just letting you live in a safe home? You ever thank the Lord, thank you, Lord, that I don't have to sleep with a hatchet under my pillow? Yes or no? Amen. Yeah, praise it. We ought to praise the Lord. I don't have to sleep like that. I got somebody that loves me. Or, or you might live alone and say, I got a dog. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Okay, whatever. But, but thank the Lord. Amen. Come on. Mama suffered extreme domestic violence. She was murdered by her husband on Thanksgiving, November 25th, 1993, at her home there in Rockingham. That land that we're going to be able to see the veterans use for those who have uh, fallen. Amen? Those men and women who served our country. I'm so thankful for that. If you met my mama for any length of time, you would know what I'm telling you is the truth. You would know what I'm telling you is the truth. Some of you knew my mama in this audience. You knew her just briefly. But some of you still are living today that have met my mother. Thank you. Amen. So what I'm telling you is the truth. Erase any picture in your mind of a defeated, depressed, or complaining woman. My mother captured opportunities. You hear me or not? Say. If you want to be down and, and nasty, I tell you what, this is a message you're going to hate, okay? No excuses here. She was a conqueror. Say that with me. She was a what? You got to believe like that, guys. And I'm done now almost. I'm going. She was the what? Now you know why I feel that way, don't you? Yes or no? Not very, very few people have a mama that went through what mine did, and yet she still was a, she was a conqueror. Incredible. And I give her so much praise today. Now here's what I want to encourage you to do. Would you say them out loud with me? Here we go. Let's learn from mama today. Then we got a little bit more message, and we're done. Say it with me. I encourage you, here we go, to do what? That might be nice. Try that on your marriage. I'm ugly today, ain't I? I encourage you to what? Keep going. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Amen. Come on. There you go. And let's thank the Lord for Mama, even though we're not done. We're not done. Amen. Capture the opportunity for today. Live in the what? Live in the now. That's a tough message on some people probably listening today. I hope you scored pretty good. Not here to put you down. I'm trying to lift you up. Amen. Come on. I'm not patting you on the back. I doubt that all of us in here have that list down pat, do we? Yes or no? We can learn. I ain't dead yet. I still want to learn. Now, here's the last thing. So bless mama. And I'm going to be done. We'll make it quick, rise like we did this morning. We'll be fine. How can I bless my mama? How can I bless my wife? How can I bless the ladies in my life? You just saw me do it, didn't you? Did you see me bless my mama right here? Yes or no? Sure you did. Let's just talk about it real quick. How can you bless mama? Number one. Number one. Say it pretty loud if you don't mind. One, two, three. Did y'all hear me? Zero tolerance, period. None for disrespect for your mother. Did you hear me, yes or no? Hope you got that clear. You're watching online, listening on radio. Zero tolerance for disrespect. And here's the point. Respect her for who she is. Here's the biggest problem that we need to do right here. Say that with me. Watch your what? Watch your mouth. I came home yesterday. I was away yesterday morning for a little bit. I come back home. I'm raising two little girls again. Y'all know that, right? Pray for me. I come home. And Miss Jenny, their grandmother, thinks they're angels. They are, aren't they, ma'am? And Miss Connie feels the same way. I know you do. That's why right. y'all need to quit hanging out together. But anyway, here we go. But I come home. I go, where's Danny? That's the eight-year-old. And Abby says, she's in her room crying. Why? 
This is Mother's Day weekend. Why? And she says, because she didn't get to watch TV. And she said it wasn't fair. So she goes to her room crying. I grew up in Rockingham. We hardly had a television. You understand what I'm saying? So man, man, and the worst words you could ever say to me are these words. It's not fair. How many don't like that word? You don't just don't like it. I don't like that at all. So I lit into her like, you know, white on rice. Because that's disrespectful. It's not fair. Your mother tells you you're not watching the TV right now, and you pitch a little fit and say, it's not fair. And you're going to go cry on Mother's Day weekend. What's wrong with you? So I made her feel this big. Because that's what dads do. And I did that to about 8 o'clock at night. Amen. That's disrespectful. Yes or no? Amen. Whoso curses his father or his mother, his lamp shall be put out in obscure darkness. You think I'm bad? Listen to what God says. I don't care what your fam family is. and We don't do that to our mother. You hear me or not? Say. How many had a rough childhood with a rough mother, but you saw the Lord help you and it sort of turned out a little bit better than you thought it could? Can I see some hands? A few of you. Amen. I ain't saying it always will. But a lot of times, if you'll take God at his word, don't disrespect, you'll see good things come of it. Don't disrespect your wife. Don't disrespect your daughters. You hear me, people. Yes or no? Little girls, come on. We got a parent. I get that. But listen, the Proverbs of Solomon, a wise son makes a glad father. A foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. Watch your mouth. Got to go, Raj. Give her what? Give mama what? One more time. Give mama what? This is in the Bible. Amen. Her children rise up and call her what? And her husband also calls her blessed. Husbands, come on. Step up, man. A lot of times, I'm growing in my relationship with Kim. I'm not going to be here all day, but the bottom line, I'm growing. Did you know a lot of times I grow in love with Kim when I watch how she treats the children? She's loving. She reads with them. She's so much more patient than I am. And I'll find myself at times falling deeper in love with her by the way she takes care of the children. Is that goofy or what? It's beautiful. Praise her for that. Praise her for that. It's a beautiful thing. Respect her. Give her praise. Keep going, Rods. Lots of scriptures. Let's do another one. Tell mama this. Tell, it's an old-fashioned thing I wrote. Tell mama this. Say it with me. I am not ashamed of you. Tell your mama you ain't ashamed of her. You ain't ashamed of your mama, are you? Exactly, right? No, that's my mama, ain't it? That's right. That's, I've known y'all for a long time. When you were little, that woman loved you. When you were in trouble, that woman loved you. She ain't perfect, I ain't perfect, you ain't perfect. But right there is love. Amen? That's your mama. Amen? I love that. Seeing a daughter and a mama just stare at, look at each other like that. Amen? I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of you, mama. Amen or oh me? Ashamed of you? Mama. Maybe you've got a mama that's old now. She can't eat her food. It drips down her shirt. I'll get that for you, mama. I'm not ashamed of you, mama. Did you hear me or not? You're my mama. Say that with me. You're, you're my mama. That's what I see when I say that today. I know it's a little different. Tell your mama this. Say it with me. I what? Claim you. I claim you. And I'm what? you my mama. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on. I got to quit. I ain't done yet, though. Number two. Respect, mama. Watch your mouth. Number two, rec say that with me. Recognize. Look over here. Don't you love this? Look over here. Living proof. Right there. There's a mama. Because the baby's acting up a little. She needs that. Little baby needs that. Look at her. Look at her. Because that's what mamas do. Amen or what? Now, we fellas don't do that. 
we like take the baby. <laughs> Amen. Recognize her. I did that, sweetie. I recognized you, okay? For what she does, man. Tell her thanks. Let's say it out loud. One, two, three. Thanks, thanks. Tell mama thanks often. Tell mama thanks often. Tell mama thanks often. There'll be a day when you won't be able to say it no more to her. Thank you, mama. Thank you, mama. Thank you, mama. Last time I talked to mama was on a Sunday night. She called me to tell me, you won't believe what your brother did. What, mama? She said, he bought me a brand new truck. What? That was my last conversation with mama. Thank her, man. You hear me? Come on. If you can call her today, call her. If you can go see her, go see her. If you can love on her face, love on her face. Amen? Mama. Don't forget her. A woman, when she's in travail, she's got sorrow because her hours come. But as soon as she's delivered of that child, she doesn't remember the pain anymore because the, the joy of that baby's born. Isn't that funny how women are saying? You had that baby. Let's thank the Lord for the women. Come on in the mamas that had some babies. Look at you. If us fellas had a baby, we'd get bumper stickers. We'd go on a campaign. We would tell you how bad it was for the rest of our life. You're special. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. God made you special for us. And we're going to recognize you for that. Guys, I love you. You mean the world to me. Sometimes we think we arrived here on our own. We didn't. We know that, guys. Hearken unto your father that begat you and don't despise your mother when she's what? It's funny. My uncle moved back in with my grandmother. He was an alcoholic. He built the house when he was young, when he was strong, when he was smart, when he was good. But then the bottle got him. He moved back in with my grandmother. I'm just a little bitty boy. And I remember us getting the call that my uncle had beat up my grandmother. He beat up his own mother. And my mama went over there. That's before the days of Jesus, okay? And got mama. Got mama out of there. A short time later, my uncle, drinking, smoking in that house that was his, burned himself alive. I got the call from Mama before Jesus' days. Your uncle burned to death. Maybe it was after Jesus' days. This was after Jesus' days, the burning part. I said, Mama, I'll come home. Mama said this, don't waste your time. You talk like this to your mother? You treat your mother bad, that's what your family's going to say about you. Did you hear me or not today? Yes or no? Did we lose that or not? You respect, you recognize your mother. Talks about husbands. Husbands dwell with them according to knowledge. Give honor to the wife, etc. It goes into great detail in the book of Ephesians. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Yes or no? Amen. This is how we do, guys. I'm not going to read all the scriptures because I'm out of time. Recognize her. Last point. Say that with me. What? Regard her. Respect her. Recognize her. Regard her as what? How am I supposed to treat Kim? I'm supposed to treat Kim like gold. Amen. Do I do it all the time? No. Am I wrong? Yes. Amen. This message is on me too, guys. I need to treat Kim. Miss Jenny. I need to treat you like gold. Do you hear me? You're worthy of honor. Miss Connie, you're like a mother to me. I know you're not old enough, but still. <laughs> but listen to me. This is how we're to treat people, guys. Yes or no? Especially who? Women. Amen. Let her know she matters. Mama, wife, daughters, value her. How am I supposed to treat Elise? With love and respect, correct? Value her. Who can find a virtuous woman? Her fight, price is far above rubies. Value these people in our lives. I got to quit. Treat her like what? And I'm done today. Am I done, Rod? You're killing me. No. Yes, I am. Come on, Rod. You write such long messages. Now, these are mine. Come on. 
Say it out loud. Come on. I respect you for who you are. I recognize you for what you do. I regard you as what? As precious. Have I done now, Raj? I am. Let's thank the Lord for the word this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. I got to quit. I'm shot. Amen. Let's go ahead and stand on up. I should never try to preach two messages in one, but I had to do it. It's Mother's Day. And football's not on, so I'm happy to do it. Come on. Fellowship meets every Sunday morning on our beautiful 15 and a half acre campus in the Bullseye of Rotunda West, Florida at 140 Rotunda Boulevard West. Early worship begins at 8.30 a.m. with our morning worship service beginning at 10.30 a.m. Between these two services we offer gourmet coffee, fresh juices, pastries, and lots of fellowship free of charge in our hospitality center. If you are looking for a church in the Inglewood area or would just like to pay us a visit, we would love to fellowship with you. For more information, give us a call at 941-475-7447 or log on to fcinglewood.com. For Pastor Gary Clark and all of us at Fellowship, God bless you.